greetings. This is uh, Fred Alaska. Thanks for joining me. Uh, happy Halloween and all that. Whatever. I don't celebrate pagan shit. But anyway, so <laughs> what I wanted to share with you guys today uh, comes from Ariel, Jeff, and Candace. Ariel and Jeff are mom and dad. Candace is their daughter. Now, they used to live in Rabbit Creek Valley, which is South Anchorage, over Upper Hillside, back, it, it's, you know, basically south of Anchorage, or southeast of Anchorage. So, where they happened to live, where they were renting from, there was only, at this time, there was only four houses on this road, and they were spread apart. Now, they're back up in there into that upper alpine type of area so a lot of scrub brush very few trees and they had this two-story kind of a-frame style cabin they were renting huge bay windows in the front gorgeous views of the south you know south facing and when uh, you're in the kitchen area which is into the back of the lower level you have a counter and over on your left hand side is this wood stove that was about six feet from the bay windows and everything and the rest of the house was loft style above with two bedrooms up there right so the way it was explained to me was they'd rented this place for uh, a long time almost a decade now Ariel and Jeff were just married when they moved there and uh, this was some time back. Uh, Candace, the daughter, is now uh, 14, going on 15. And so we're, we're going back, you know, 15, 16 years. Well, as Ariel and Jeff, they had just moved in. Ariel was uh, just found out she's pregnant. So they're excited about, you know, bringing a child into their marriage and, you know, just all that happy stuff that goes along with it. Well, <laughs> within the first month, because they moved in midsummer and it's going into the fall time and they noticed weird like howls off in the distance which would be due east of where they were at uh, they heard it clearly all the time they asked the neighbors hey, do you hear these howls and a couple of them were like i don't know what you're talking about another one was like yeah i hear it just be aware nothing really uh no one was really speaking much about it you know which made Jeff angry because he's like you know we, we live out here together what we need to know if there's like a pack of wolves around you know we're gonna have a child soon you know we need to know this stuff right well he, he was a little disheartened at how closed off a lot of his neighbors were and um, it's expensive to live back in there all the, the most of the places back in there are, you know pretty high-end stuff and so he let his frustration go and just you know and for the first couple years, they would just mainly in the fall time, early fall to mid fall, never in the late fall, but early mid fall, they would hear these screams, weird howls off to the east. And he said, it seemed like every time they heard it, they would hear it closer. And so now the way this place is laid out, the first time things went real wonky is, uh, approximately two years into living there uh candace was just toddler you know a year and a half or so year and they were in the kitchen behind the little breakfast bar thing and the baby candace was in one of those little bouncy chair things uh off just off to the side right in their view you know <laughs> it was just getting dark and they're behind this breakfast bar looking out their bay windows now out those bay windows when you're when you're facing looking out there's a deck that starts to the left and wraps around to the right to a stairway that goes down and just off of that stairway is the hot tub uh no no port over it not, nothing covering it just open hot tub right there on a slab so and oh don't let me forget to, there was also a two-car garage beneath them so it was Pretty much three story but two stories shown because it's kind of dug into the hillside kind of deal <laughs> so they're looking out 
and they're not really paying attention out the window. They got floodlights all over the place, you know, so anything moves by, they've seen bear, moose, fox, you name it, lynx, all that shit. They, they've seen it all come and go. Well, the floodlights turn on, but they don't see anything out in the driveway, you know, cause they're, you know, rightfully so, they're worried about bears, especially that part of town. Uh, cause you got McHugh Creek just south of them, you know, there's salmon that get in there and, you know, known bear activity over that way. So, as the, you know, the, the, the floodlights come on, and from what Ariel said was, is that she notices this reddish brown kind of fur ball. She, she couldn't really make it out right at the bottom of the deck, and their deck is approximately damn near 15 feet off the ground, right? So she notices this, this little, kind of like a, a fur ball moving around just at the lowest part of the deck where she could see from her vantage point. So she tells Jeff, what, the, what is that? So he goes around the counter, goes over, and <laughs> now the way the house is cut out of the bank, uh, there's a dirt mound off to that left-hand side when you're looking out that comes up to where it would look like a two-story building off to their left-hand side if you're facing that way. So as he's going over to look out to see what, you know, what this little brown fuzzy ball was going across, all of a sudden he's, you know, he's looking and his wife just shrieks, Ariel shrieks and screams, runs over, snatches the baby and runs upstairs saying it's a monster, it's a monster, right? So Jeff immediately, he's kind of like, what the hell? He's looking around trying to see what she saw and she's already upstairs. She's already got the gun. She's on the bed. She's yelling for Jeff. Hurry up. Get up here. Get up here. It's a monster. It's a monster. He's looking out. He can't see anything. So he just, following her lead, runs up there to see what the hell, right? And she's totally freaked out. Uh, she's clutching the baby. She's got the gun across her lap. He takes the rifle. And he's like, what did you see? And she said, it's standing out there. It blends in really well by the brush. She gives specific directions of where to look. She goes, don't go out there. It's a monster. It's huge. So Jeff goes back downstairs, goes and looks out the window, and sure enough, this thing is squatted down. Uh, he said the floodlight and its coloring next to the brush made it just almost seamlessly blend in. He said the only thing that gave it away was the eye shine. He said if the eye shine wasn't there, it would have blended in seamlessly, right? <laughs> so he's he's stuck he, he's like what the hell am i really looking at well it starts swaying back and forth stands up and walks back down around cuts around the front of that deck and he watches it the whole time same little fuzzy head uh when he actually measured to the base of from where the ground was up to where he was seeing the head and at the angle and stuff he estimated 14 feet tall that's that's massive right so one of the things he said stuck out was it looked pretty slender it looked broad shouldered but slender uh didn't look like a huge hulking it was massive but it wasn't like a bodybuilder hulking it was more lean it was a little more lanky looking like you know basketball player with more muscle and so uh he said he couldn't really make out the face because it was an ashen gray and the way the light was hitting it and everything around it, it, it was hard to make out detail other than the eye shine because eye shine had him fixated on that, right? So the thing walks off. He tries to keep an eye on it. The, the door that uh, is off to the right outside of the kitchen that op you can open it up and go right down the stairs to the hot tub outside um, was one of those doors with a window in it. And so he was trying to look through it, but a lot of it was frosted panes, right? And so he couldn't get a clear sight, but he did watch it through that walk off, right? So as he's like trying to figure out what the holy shit, they call the authorities. Uh, they were told uh, there's, you know, no one's going to respond to a bear call unless it's trying to break in. If the bear, if they totally ignored everything. He explained everything to them as I'm explaining it to you. And they directly told him no one's going to respond to a bear call unless it's trying to break in. If it tries to break in, then call back. So they're immediately dismissive. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, the dynamics of it. I wasn't on the phone or whatever. 
but Jeff was very uh, indignant about how he was treated. Um, the, he's a professional. He he's not he's not your average deep woods Alaskan. You know you know what I mean. He 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 works you know business related stuff. He he's not an overly outdoorsy guy. <laughs> so he he felt really insulted by the way they treated him and you know he's he's highly educated so he he let it go you know warned the wife okay when i'm gone we need to have all these things in place security wise we don't know what the hell so later on that next morning he goes to the neighbors uh, his closest neighbor was down the road about uh, not quite a half a mile he gets down there and he starts asking the guy hey look I know what I saw. My wife knows what she saw. Have you ever seen anything like this? The guy just shrugs and goes, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. And Jeff gets indignant with him saying, hey, look, this thing was looking in my house. You know, it was looking at my wife. My child's in there. I need to know if you know of anything going on with this with this creature. Don't know what you're talking about. Never seen nothing like it. Please leave. So Jeff leaves. Now, everything stays calm for a, a good couple years uh candace is approximately three four years old the next incident that happens right so they're out on that front balcony that front deck uh because there's a, a double doorway that opens up out onto that right <laughs> they were out there one evening it was fall again and time had passed so everything had calmed down they weren't hypersensitive they you know they were vigilant but they weren't like oh my god there you know there's brush over there you know what and not everything was a sasquatch to him he had researched he had you know uh learned about you know sasquatch hairy man all this stuff as far as he he could find you know because he wasn't real knowledgeable on it so he didn't really know where to look but anyway he he figured he picked up enough to know okay watch you know weird sounds all that stuff i'll keep my eye out whatever well they're out there and candace uh they had just redid the railing system um because of code change right it had to be you know less than four inches or whatever so the little kids can't get their heads stuck in the little banisters so that was just redone and they're out there enjoying it and it gets on in the dark and anytime uh, they had the porch lights on which are different from the floodlights that light up when there's movement out on the perimeter. So they're all sitting there and <laughs> they were enjoying the night and they could see the stars. So they killed the porch lights just to have complete darkness. You know, you had some of the light pollution from Anchorage, he said, but you could just see the stars above you just beautifully. So they had the light off and they're just staring up. Well, as they're all standing there, Candace, just a toddler, holding on to the banisters looking up just being a kid you know just being a little toddler well all of a sudden the floodlights pop on pop pop as soon as they do out of the corner of his eye he sees this big brown thing moving coming directly towards candace so he snatches his daughter turns his wife pushes her into the house and shuts the doors and as they get inside back behind that counter uh, they started keeping a pistol on the counter and a rifle near the door <laughs> but he got them behind the counter to shield their eyes shield them from this thing looking at him because once he got inside and had the door shut and stuff and got behind the counter this thing had climbed up onto the deck now oof. he said the first set of pane windows before the upper ones uh, were about 10 feet right and then there was about two feet of uh, log and whatnot right uh, <coughs> excuse me and so basically this thing was looking from the second set of big pane windows back down at them in their kitchen because again it's cathedral style it's open and these big windows and he was just struck at how big it was I mean seeing it at a distance right out the window squatted down and then kind of moving along he he really he didn't put you know everything wasn't as vivid as this thing standing there and he said he yelled I'm gonna shoot you I'm gonna shoot you and this thing kind of kind of lowered itself down looking down through the lower windows and then stepped back off the off the banister over the railing and dropped down to the ground 
and moved away. <laughs> Called the authorities again. Uh, told them there was a bear that attempted to get in their house. They feel it's dangerous. He had already known to just tell them it's a bear. One officer responds, an APD officer, over an hour later, well over an hour later. Uh, he had to call back a few times to try to get someone to respond. So as the officer's there and they're telling him, hey, here's what's going on, uh, you know, we, we need to address this because it was literally, I, I think it was trying to get my child. They said, well, bears have been known to predate on child, you know, kids, this and that. He goes, it, it wasn't a bear. Well, he runs into the same wall. He goes, I can't put that in a report. They won't, be, I mean, it will go nowhere. <laughs> so as he argues with the officer, he finally had enough of the, the shit and says, just leave. Just leave. You're worthless. Just go. Officer leaves indignant being insulted and Jeff feels insulted by the way the guy was treating him. And in all honesty, Jeff said that the officer really had no nowhere to take the complaint because no one would listen to the officer if he laid it out the way Jeff had explained it, right? Ariel at this point is screaming at the cop, you're worthless, you're this. And Mama Bear freaking had it. She was going off on the cop. Anyway, cop leaves and everything and Within a half hour of that cop leaving, they seen him stop down the end of the road and sit there for a little bit, right? Because there's a big 90 degree turn at the end of their road. And the officer sat there and spotlighted around a little bit. They saw him doing some stuff, maybe trying to investigate, trying to wrap his head around it. They don't know for sure because they never talked to him again. But it appeared the officer's kind of trying to look around because that's the direction that the creature left. Now, half hour after that cop drives off the back of their house was slammed about four or five times and it shook that whole big place boom 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 <laughs> he jumps up he's had enough he runs outside with the rifle uh, old SKS style uh, Chinese AK and goes out the door the little side door that goes down the steps to the hot tub and because it, it, it sticks out about six feet before the stairs drop and so he gets out there looking towards the back of the house and he sees this dark figure moving away in the darkness and starts popping shots at it, right? Had enough, screw this. Boom, 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 open season, right? He he had one of those 30 round rocker mags that go in there and he, he's putting rounds and this thing starts hauling ass and he's just trying to spit everything he has at it to get it out of there, to get it to stay out of there. Well, things go quiet. Uh, nothing no activity no nothing hyper vigilance for the next couple of years and Candace is uh, this was approximately almost four years ago uh, before they moved away a few more houses have been built up since then not that many <laughs> well just going towards Anchorage from where they're at there had been a lot of development on Upper Hillside a lot of houses getting built here there and everywhere right and so everything was quiet again however they never forgot they they tried to warn everyone the, the new houses that moved in hey be aware they just kind of give them a look like oh, okay obviously we move in next to a weirdo they didn't take him serious you know which a lot of people they don't that's fine you teach his own so now Candace is almost 10 at this point, right? She was outside with one of her girlfriends sitting on those steps that lead down to the little hot tub off to the right of the house. Now, as they're sitting there, it, it was uh, still daylight. Uh, it was towards the end of July and there was a sharp whistle that sounded like it was just right behind them. So immediately, uh, both the girls just bolt right inside. Boom. Ariel was upstairs. She heard the whistle too. She came downstairs, locked the door. She got a hold of Jeff. Jeff immediately left work, comes heading home. During that time, because it was a little bit of a commute, the girl that was visiting Candace, she lived just about half the distance her dad would have to travel, but Ariel got a hold of her parents to come get her. And fun time was over, right? So Jeff gets home 
and as Ariel and Candace are standing out on that porch and she was pointing, the whistle came from over here in these taller brush. I want you to cut that brush down. Well, there was a landlord didn't want the brush cut down. He owns the place, so I mean, he you know, he trumps that, all that. And Ariel tells him, if we can't cut that brush back for a good hundred yards, we're moving, right? So Jeff, being the debt, I mean, he's got to look out for his family. Fair enough. He, he gives the landlord the ultimatum. Hey, look, let us cut this down so we can feel safe and have room to see out without the brush being right up on the house. He throws in things like fire danger, this and that, and the landlord's like, no, the, those willows and stuff, they're, they're, they're not enough to be a fire hazard. They're, it's more than 50 feet back, blah, blah, blah. So dismisses them. So they're in the process of moving, which takes some time, right? And as Jeff is, is facilitating another home in South Anchorage, uh, more over in the Diamond area, <laughs> trying to make things happen, you know, uh, Ariel's a stay-at-home mom, so she's there all the time. Now, it's school's not in, right? So Candace is home every day. And Candace, from what she said, the the real the real reason she, she Candace wants to move away from Alaska. Um, and you know, I and I totally understand. So when I had all of them on speakerphone and I asked Candace, you know, what was the defining moment that like really made you mentally make this choice that you don't want to be in Alaska. She said it was two days after the whistle, uh, during Jeff was checking on a house in South Anchorage. It was the middle of the day, right? Middle of the day. And her and her mom were on the front deck and they had those front bay doors kind of open, right? And it, it was warm out, you know, they were out there just being mom and daughter goofing around whatever uh, they were gonna you know potentially play with the sprinkler or something along those lines well in the middle of the day as they're standing there their neighbors off to the right hand of them as they're standing on that front deck and looking down the road their neighbors are approximately maybe 300 yards to where they had their house built and th there was a line of sight you know and they could see activity outside of their house they couldn't tell exactly what was going on or hear exactly what was going on but you'd hear kids giggle and there was activity right no big deal middle of the day well all of a sudden this thing walks out from behind around the side where the the hot tub is and what caught their attention of it coming was the hot tub spun around water gushed everywhere because they rarely use the thing but it was operational but this thing phew, spun around came barely into view now this is a six-man hot tub that was full of water that's not light and it was anchored onto a cement slab this thing flung it damn near out to the front that caught their attention it walked out into view looked at them and started coming for the banister the the railing to to climb up they immediately went inside this is when Ariel fired shots uh, because when they came in the door hit and bounced open and by that point Ariel was already at the counter Candace was behind it or actually Candace had run upstairs and Mama Bear had the pistol 44 Magnum she turned around the door just swung open she popped a shot she said she doesn't know if she hit it but it was it was coming around like it was gonna follow them in and when she shot that shot it spooked it it jumped off and booked it right well, all this chaos, the, the, the hot tub whooshing out, the shot fired. <laughs> she runs over, shuts and locks the door, calls Jeff and says, you know, what the, f you know, this thing just flung the freaking hot tub, tried to grab Candace. And that was the catalyst of why Candace does not want to no longer be anywhere near woods. Uh, it, it totally totally ruined everything Jeff and Ariel just it kills them because it, it from what Jeff and Ariel said it seemed like it was focused on Candace since she was little you know what I mean and I asked Candace I was like did you ever get any weird mind speak or any weird thoughts that were not of your own or anything like that because I've had reports of such things you know and she was like no um reports of tapping on her window over the years but she was so little she didn't realize what was going on she just thought you know just a stick hitting it just just you know dismissed it but there was little things going on 
all in between these big things that uh, she didn't always tell her parents about because her mom would really stress Ariel would stress really hard when she would say there was tapping on my window last night well another point of contention was is for years they wanted to install security cameras right so landlord was like no you're not adding anything you know the floodlights are fine yada 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 uh his heels were dug in he, he didn't want them even at their own expense putting in a security system because he just didn't want that for whatever reason well they did have internal cameras right and on a couple of the internal cameras over time uh they would catch banging on the house when no one was at home you know that that type of stuff but you know, nothing, nothing they could take to the authorities and say, hey, take us serious. You know what I mean? Or to the landlord, for that matter. But uh, they got, they end up getting charged to fix that six person hot tub. Uh, the landlord claimed that they tied a chain around it and jerked it with their vehicle just to make a big hoo ha over, you know, leaving, you know, because they, they had just renewed their lease and some other stuff. It's just legality shit, you know, people get petty not not Jeff and Ariel just the landlord you know real real pompous kind of guy but uh and and that was the catalyst for them uh they're they're still in Anchorage that's not their real names uh Candace however uh just uh just a couple days ago is down with grandparents visiting down in the states um they all get real jumpy this time of year into the fall especially you know earlier fall is worse and then it, it kind of tapers but they always they from what they said it's always been in the fall in that area and this thing always came from the east but uh that's just something i'm gonna mentally keep track of when we start compiling all this data and trying to figure out you know if there's any movement patterns that we can follow or anything like that i want to thank them for sharing um it took a while to you know get all the phone calls done and and all this stuff uh for the last few months since august actually um and i thank them for being patient with me and things going on in the background um regardless of what you think feel about this topic things are happening to people whether you accept it or not what outsiders think is irrelevant when it comes to what people experience so anyway i want to thank them for sharing uh, i want to thank you guys for joining me this halloween uh, i've never been big on these made up holidays but uh so anyway i want to thank you guys for joining me and happy halloween again and we'll catch you guys soon